number of years ago was really appealing to me. I saw him as a 12 year old at a little minor hockey banquet in Cranbrook, British Columbia. And I knew I wanted to be a part of the Olympics translate, but as I started to figure out fairly early in my playing career, maybe coaching would be the angle to approach. And, uh, <laughs> so with that being said, he was one of them. And then of course, beyond that, it's guys like uh, Dave King and Claire Greg, George Kingston, uh, you know, pe people like that that were just founding fathers in terms of where the game was going in the early 70s and beyond. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my father-in-law later in the year, um, was sort of a preclude to uh, the program of excellence. He had what they call the Junior Olympic Program in British Columbia. And he sort of fathered that along with Bobby Nicholson, actually, and Dave Andrews. And so Ernie's also been a, a little important driving force in my career. And then uh, along the way, you meet people, Ken Hitchcock, for example, a good friend and a real mentor of mine. And uh, I obviously have the pleasure now of working with those standing coaches. And it just perpetuates itself. And, and uh, because of the game, um, you know, I've been able to touch it from many different angles. And uh, this is just another one that I thoroughly enjoy. Well, I was lucky. Uh when I was done playing junior hockey, I played college hockey in Alberta, and I actually got to play for, for Mike. Uh, but in our in our league, it was I think I believe it was a six-team league at the time. Perry Pern, who was one of the coach in the NHL, and Mike Johnson, who was a coach in the NHL, were coaches also. So, you know, the players maybe weren't that good, but the coaching was very good. So I was exposed to high-level coaching by Mike Johnson, Perry Pern, and Babs, and it intrigued me. So as soon as I was done playing, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to coach, stay involved in the game, and I was able to do that. Well, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I wanted to be a player, and I always thought I was going to be uh, a professor at McGill University forever is what I thought I was going to do. Then I lost my way. I played uh, hockey one year in England, and because I had done that and been to grad school and I was a player coach, I was able to say that on a resume, and Al Furchuk gave me a job at Redner College, and for me it was like a dream come true. I was 25 or 6 and then of coaching good players and doing enough winning that I went from there. I went to Moose Jaw for a couple of years in the Western Hockey League. I spent a year at the University of Lethbridge. I spent six years in Spokane. I got to coach a world junior team there. And then I spent two years in Cincinnati for Anaheim and Detroit. I coached the Anaheim Mighty Ducks for three years. And this is my ninth year in Detroit. And I've really been lucky to coach good players along the way uh, and be involved with really good people and to make my living in the game. And, you know, when you're a coach, you got to work hard, or people think you have to work hard. Really what you do is you just do what you do, and you love doing it so much you don't work at all. And you're just blessed to be doing it. And, you know, just take it to another level. I thought the two things that I'd want to talk to you about when I was here in my brief time I'm going to be with you uh, is, number one is when they call you coach, you have to take an unbelievable amount of pride in being called coach. And with that pride, and with that title comes huge expectation. And to say I'm not prepared because I'm a volunteer is the biggest cop out I ever heard. It is, your job is just to feed your family. Your passion is coaching. You gotta be ultra prepared when you see those kids. And really in the end, you got one goal. And the goal is to make sure they love the game more when they're done with you than when they arrive. And if you can remember those two simple things, I think to me, that's what it's all about at every level is, is if you treat them right and you're demanding, you make them accountable, but you appreciate who they are, you're going to make them better people and in the end better athletes. And when you do those things, you obviously had to prepare to do those things. And to me, I think you have a chance to touch touch your group and have some success with it. And in the end, I mean, touching and being around kids and getting to help them out and making them better people and better citizens is what coaching is all about anyway. We've already got ready for the game. It's downtime for us anyway. But to me, that's what you've got to do in your life. Is you, you can be a great banker and a great coach at the same time. But lots of us, the best athletes that I've been around, so Iserman and Chelios and Litzer, they got this whole life away from the game. They don't grind the game 24-7. They'd be worn out when they got there. They come and play, and we go home. The people that are under stress all the time and grind it 24-7 don't last. That's just the way it is. Mm. Uh, These two guys are here too. Yeah. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to preface just by saying that uh, I've been coaching for 20 years. And for 20 years I've been saying the same thing for kids that want to learn how to be better hockey players and friends and ask them the same thing. 
I just saw him walk through Fort Williams and learn how to play hockey properly. And I know you guys haven't been with the Red for 20 years, but it's a, it's a very classy organization that plays a wonderful brand of hockey. I want to ask you, because I've seen many interviews and things like that. My brother's a pro coach. He actually played for me in the Canucks. And uh, you see now such a, a wonderful outlook on life. I, I think that if, if I went through any sort of hardship, if I went to war, I'd want to come my side. Can you tell us a little bit, where did you get that? Like, is it from your family? Like, where? No, I, I don't know. I, uh, this is what I know, do know. I know how to talk to people from hanging around my mom. My buddies would come over, they'd sit at the kitchen table for a half hour. I'd never known they were in my house. My mom could talk to people and she loved people. And my dad was a worker. He was a mine, miner. He ran a mine. And to this day, I still remember as a kid asking him, Dad, how do you get people to work hard for you? And he said, you can never ask anyone to work harder for you than you're willing to work yourself. And me, I think that's what we do is we work, we get prepared, we really work at it. Well, I think we love our players, and sometimes players would tell you, hey, he's a hard ass, he's this, or the media will tell you this. I'm hard. I'm real hard. I want you to pay attention. I want you to do it right. I want you to do it right every time when you walk in the rink. I want you to be energized. I want you to give it your best. Can you actually imagine being that hard you to ask someone to give it their best every time? Like, I don't understand what's hard about that. I know that's what I do. I get up in the morning, I'm ready to go. I'm excited about life. You get to choose your attitude each and every day of your life. When you walk in this room, you can make a difference or you can suck the life out of the room. The same thing out there. Every single day you get to choose your attitude. So to me, why wouldn't we maximize the time we're here? And lots of people have done a lot of great things for me and I enjoy being around people. And I think that's the approach we have around people. Mike, uh, you guys know. Excellent. Good. <laughs> no, I actually, it's going to be a question for, for sure. them, actually, but for you as well. Is obviously from time to time in your case, you, you seem to be very well prepared every game. And you, know, you got to set mind on how you want to play the game. How do you use your assistant? Like sometimes you guys have set this agreement on the play or how you want to attack the game. I never ever disagree. So, <laughs> how, how do you manage the game? I don't know. Go ahead. Mike Lawson. I mean, he, he invites them. There's no disagreement. There's no discussion. We're not getting better. And and as Mike was talking earlier, I was thinking to myself, and I've always felt that the rink has to be a destination. Right. And as a coach or coaching staff, you have to be the source of many things. And you've got to be the source of wisdom. You've got to be the source of inspiration, motivation, accountability, discipline. But you also have to be the source of growing. And Mike allows that. And he really he, he invites that along. We have great discussions, and, and for me, having been a head coach in this league for a number of years, coming into a situation like this, what Mike's allowed me to do, and, and, I, and that's why I, I came to Mike, honestly, and I knew Pete from a reputation. He allowed me to reach and stretch and grow. And I've been coaching this league as a head coach for 10 years. And why that happens is because we're allowed to discuss things and disagree and get better because of that. And it's a wonderful environment. You know, if I wasn't here, then Pete could answer this. If I wasn't here, though, or when you're sitting around and home with your buddies, or you're sitting with your wife, I'm sure there's times, like, my wife tells me if she weren't for me, she'd quit me one day. Or with, so, I'm sure there's times, like, Pete wants to be a head coach in the league. Come be a head coach in the league. You want to do things your own way. you got ideas. There's no question about it. I'm sure there's tons of times could vouch for this is, is that, that you're probably pissed off. You're, you'd like to do something else and you're doing it a different way. Is that a fair statement or no? Well, you know, it's an honest statement what happens. There's more than one ways to, to defend a play. There's more than one way to line up to defend an offset face-off. But at the end of the day, when we bounce stuff off each other and they both work, it's Mike's final call on how we're going to do it. If it doesn't work, we're all in shit. Right? So we're going to make sure it works and then I'll say, hey, my way's better. And he'll go, well, I've been doing it this way for seven years. I've never given up a goal on an offset faceoff. That's pretty good evidence. Right. So what we're doing when Tom talks about stretching and growing is, is we have a base, we have a foundation as coaches that we believe in, and we share it with each other, and then we improve it. So when we take your drill, if we came and watched your practice and you ran a great practice, we take your drill and we tweak it for the Detroit Red Wing way. We try to find a way to make it better, in our opinion, for us. And that's what we're constantly doing. The other thing I would say is I'm trying to challenge these guys every day and myself because what we did yesterday isn't good enough. And so if you're not getting better each and every day, if you don't embrace lifelong learning, if you don't embrace new ideas, challenge them all the time. Hey, Pete comes in, I saw this last night. Did you guys see this? What, you know, I heard someone speak. 
and was at a soccer practice, I saw this. We're talking all the time. And in the end, after you work together, I don't know if it was Pete's idea, I don't know if it was Tom's idea, Pete McKittrick, our video coach, wasn't allowed to come because he's from the U.S., but uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's his idea, I don't know whose idea it was. But if it's the best idea, it's the Detroit Red Wing way. It has nothing to do with my way. It has to do with what's the best way we can find. And when you're involved in, with all these coaches, when I'm involved with the Olympic coaches, when I'm, you're learning stuff from guys each and every day. I think R&D in, in, in the business world is uh, research and development, research and design. What is it? Development. Development. Okay. Well, in my world, it's called Robin D. You just steal ideas from other people and make your own and make it better. That's what we do. Awesome. I guess I have a question for all three of you. Other than the hockey, technical hockey preparation, what, what, what did you guys do to prepare yourself to work with pro athletes? I think the biggest thing, you know, for me, I came out of working in the POE program. I was at the university level. I've been at the junior level, the American League level, the National League level. Is you have to have a relationship with your players. They have to know that you care about them to a certain degree, and you have their best interests at heart also. So I think it's a relationship-based business. I think there's lots of people in this room even that have unbelievable hockey knowledge, but can you share it with your guys, and can you be with your guys, and as Bab says, expect it every day for eight, nine months, and coexist. You have to have a relationship in order to do that. Yeah. But, I mean, what do you guys do to prepare or to... How did you gain that skill set? Is there, is there something to gain that skill set? Or is it just something, again, like you were saying, like that, you know, just Rob and Blair or whatever, the, Go ahead, the R&D side of things, and you just Rob Every one of us has had mentors. Yeah. You talk to your mentors for sure. Yeah. You have an end point, I would think, in mind. If you want to be a national hockey league coach, you want to coach the CIS, you want to coach the major junior, you want to be a guest, best little Adam coach in town, great. You've got to start with the end in mind, first of all, and understand that that's your destination. And then you do everything you possibly can to get better along the way, which includes putting yourself in leadership positions that may be uncomfortable at first, but where you start to activate and get better and understand yourself better, and, and all of a sudden you start to divine yourself. And this is who I am, and now you're able to sign your work with, with your own work, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I think that's really critical. Um, you know, gleaning information off of other people, not just, you know, in your own backyard, but out there. And I think this is where Hockey Canada has done a great job with the mentorship program in general, being able to go online and understand from each other how, how, how we can do search parts of the game for sure. There's no question in my mind, if you don't have an objective in mind, it doesn't have to be professional mind. You know, then you've got to look at those incremental steps along the way, and that's where Pini's point, about being interactive, talking to people, communicating well, and understanding how you can grow and get better, and putting yourself in a position. You know, to do that, even though many might think you've already arrived and done that, you're always a long way from home. But it's a hell of a ride. I would just say to you too is that to me it's the fun is getting better. It's not a destination, it's about getting better. It's about being excited and having a passion about trying to improve. If you're Elliot and you keep doing what he's doing, eventually you won't have a job. He has to get better. I don't care. As soon as you get to a point where you're comfortable and you're resting on what you did yesterday, I think you're done. And so that little bit, for me, I think it's a little bit of fear for me. I want to be the best for this. I do. I don't know why I think like that, but I want to. So that means doing it every day and trying to get better and figuring out new ways and new people to talk to to try to gather information. For you guys, it's the same thing. You don't want to share stuff with those kids. You want to help them get better. I would think to be the best you can possibly be. And because you won the championship last year, if you do the same thing you did last year, you're not winning. There's no way. It doesn't work. Mike. So, sorry. These guys have got to go. Uh, yeah, got to go. One more question. One more here. Right here. Just curious. You ran the ball hockey for quite a while with your Olympic group. Yeah. And I like this find your impressions on the transition from one to the other and, and how that should be done more by guys in this room who tend to be on the ice all the time rather than off the ice and I think there's so much more we can do off ice and we're not doing really. Well I really liked it. I thought it was outstanding. Now, you know as the Olympic coach for Canada and you have all 250 media there, when you decide you're going to do something like that, number one is you're going to face question. So you got to be sure that it might work so you know I went to people that done a lot of walks. I thought it was excellent. It was
slow. And you got to share the information. So we learned 23 different ways. So we were able to show it to them in a booklet. Then we were able to show it to them uh, on video. We were able to diagram. Then we were able to walk out and go through it. You got to learn some of these ways. And it was slow enough that I think what you've done is they're going back for their teams, things are going to be different. But when you get back together, all you're going to have to do is turn the light bulbs back on. I thought it was an excellent thing. The other thing I liked about it, to be honest, I hadn't done it before. And so you stretch yourself to try to find a way with whatever you've been given to maximize the situation. And you do what you think is right. You don't spend a whole lot of time caring what everyone else thinks. Mike, just uh, kind of like a question on the lighter side. For your final roster and Olympic team, will you be taking much uh, input from your uh, dad's uh, from my dad? From your dad? <laughs> well, well I dad, listen to a lot of your radio my, interviews and they always ask what your dad's input to you. <laughs> what I'll do though is that obviously we could do it right here. We could pick the team right here. And I think most of you would be right on 10 or 11 or 12. Got a line up the but moon and the stars to win at every level. You have to line up the moon and the stars. So don't kid yourself. Just because you're Canadian doesn't mean you're going over there to win. So what we're going to do is we're going to have gold medal preparation at our development camp, gold medal preparation as coaches, gold medal selection process. And if we do all that gold medal, we have a chance in the end, we have a chance to succeed. And that's all you can ask for in life is a chance anyway. should be fun. Guys, i got to work. <laughs>